Hello everyone. The picture that you see of mine is dated a couple of years back when I was commissioner of police of Mangalore city wherein I was uh, commanding police forces of more than uh, 3000 uh, men and women. I used to take decisions which would affect law and order of millions of people. Every decision that I take affected a huge number of people and every act of mine was spoken in the streets. But wait, this is today's me. Far from all the hustle buzzle, away from the so-called happening things of city, in the jungle, in the most serene uh, setup, spending lots of time with this magical, wonderful creatures called tigers. So, how did this happen? This was the trigger. She was a magical tigress whom I had been tracking as a wildlife enthusiast for maybe 6-7 years. She was a lovely tigress who was bringing up a beautiful litter of three cubs. She had an aura of her own. On a particular uh, unfortunate day, I got a news that she had been killed. She had been snared. So I started tracking the various news reports. I started looking at it uh, very closely. Despite best efforts, all the three cubs perished. That's why I decided I can't be a bystander any longer. That's when I took this leap. I had many sleepless nights, but I thought this is my Buddha moment. I have to leave all these things, go and do something meaningful, learn about them, try to do something meaningful and maybe give them a better future. So, where did I head out? I registered myself for a doctoral research and headed out to Nilgiri Biosphere, which is a home to many tigers and it's, it has a lot of vital tiger landscapes like Bandipur, Nagarhole, Mudumalai, Wayanad and BRT. Before I tell much more details about what I did and what are the miracles of the tiger world, I want to get some basic facts right. See, if we look at uh, just about 125 years back, the tiger population was huge. India alone had about a lack of tigers. But where are we now? Now we only have about 3600 in our country. In whole of the world, it's just about 5500 tigers roaming around in the world. What does that mean? That means for every one and a half million, roughly 1.65 million of human beings like us, there is only one tiger left in the wild. Yes, friends, that's the urgency. Imagine for a whole town of population of human beings, there is only one tiger left in the wild. So, that's the urgency. If you ask me why we should conserve tigers, I will take you to this conventional wisdom which is there in a verse in Mahabharata, which reads something like this, Vyagraha vanasyaha rakshakaha dharmasya cha pratikaha tasya rakshana maivet bhumei santulan bhavet. Roughly it means the tiger is the guardian of the forest and a symbol of dharma. By protecting him, we preserve the balance of the earth. But you need to see what these magical creatures are there are before you understand what it is. So I'll just try to give you a sneak peek into their marvelous world. You heard that roar? She was calling out her kids. I'll show you how magical that life with her cubs is. So tiger 
is an apex predator, an umbrella species for conservation. What does that mean? Just go through this clip, I'll explain. So when I speak of tiger as an umbrella species, this is what I mean. A tiger means an entire ecosystem. The prey species, the co-predators, the landscapes. So when I set out to save a tiger, I am saving all these prey species. I am saving all the wonderful grasslands. I am setting out to save that entire landscape. So if you look at it, the entire western guards just abutting our uh, coastal western coast is all tiger territory. So when I speak of saving tigers, I'm speaking at this scale. But are they safe? Are these wonderful creatures safe? Not really. There are many threats to their survival. Let's look as to what are the main threats. The first and foremost threat is the habitat loss. Just a couple of decades back, tigers had a huge range spreading all across from Turkey to Far East Russia. But now, they have been reduced to just 13 ranging countries in fragmented patches. How did this happen? Massive deforestation for logging, for paper, for many other commercial users, uh, multiple industrial things like mining and other things, building a lot of linear infrastructure like roads, like uh, power lines and all. And Ever burgeoning human population has taken human habitation directly into their very core home, they into the very forest. So what is the result? I am showing you a tiger which bore the brunt of a road accident, got both the hands broken and just could manage to barely cross the road and he succumbed. What a loss. Another very important threat is poaching. Why does poaching happen? Poaching happens because there is a huge market, international market to various products like pelts, like uh, the bones and many other body parts which people wrongly think have some strange medicinal uh, uh, value. So poaching is cutting down the population size. I am just showing you a report wherein a gang was caught just a couple of months back and they confessed to have killed hundreds of tigers in a decade or so. Alarming, right? The another uh, looming threat which I have studied in depth is human-tiger conflicts. Basically, human-tiger conflict means tiger loses its habitat, is forced to come out and then has conflicts in the form of, say, injuring a cattle or killing a cattle for food or injuring a human being or killing him when he is trying to pass through. In this particular picture, I am trying to show you hotspots of conflict in Nagarole Tiger Reserve. I am showing you that the Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary, which is just on the other flank, the area in between was a wonderful forest once upon a time. But with passing time, the whole thing has got converted into estates, reducing the whole thing into a human habitation, forcing tigers to enter into conflicts. So, to understand the conflicts, we have camera trapped the, the whole area to gain more scientific uh, insights. I'll just take you to the field to make you understand what are the benefits of camera trapping. The purpose is twofold. One is to ID as to which is the tiger which is moving around. Second is once we have ID'd, if we plot uh, uh, the tiger in its various camera trap points where it was sighted, we will be able to roughly establish its home territory. So in that way, it helps us to have a clear idea about number of tigers in this area. So once the conflict happens, what are our options? Options are limited. I am showing you a couple of rescue and rehabilitation pictures wherein once the tiger has injured or killed a human being or a cattle, we are forced to tranquilize him, dart him, move him to a safer location and often they have to be kept in captivity for a life. 
a punishment which they don't deserve. But in, I am showing you one successful experiment wherein we rehabilitated him to uh, wild. It doesn't happen too often. So this is a lovely male tiger which had this opportunity of being released back to his home. Look at him, how ferocious, how beautiful. Happily going back to his home. But not that it happens every time. We have uh, uh, radio collared him to monitor his movements, to see whether he again enters into human habitations. But this doesn't happen, my friends. Often we are uh, um, forced to keep him in captivity. So now all said and done, if you people in this room ask, uh, why should I get involved? Why should everyone get involved? I have just shown you a set of facts that have happened in the last decade. These are all natural disasters which have happened in tiger territories of India. These are all disasters which have happened in Western Ghats. What are they? Majority of them are either flash floods, forest fires, or massive, massive landslides, which have resulted in untold human misery. They have resulted in deaths of hundreds of people. How did this happen? Because tiger landscapes were not conserved. So precisely this is why we need to get involved. If we have to lead a peaceful life, if we need to uh, have access to clean water, clean air, we need to get involved. What can you do? You can do a lot. As a student, if you think, just start learning more about uh, how to conserve. Don't get into consumeristic activities which kill forests. Don't waste paper. Do, try to recycle, reuse. Don't support cutting of trees. Support native species of trees. If at all, if you happen to be in a tiger reserve, behave responsibly. Don't tease a tiger. Respect him. Don't throw any plastic material in any serene landscapes. The list can be long. Once you get initiated, as you say, that spark, a small spark is lit. Big shifts can happen. So I hope all of you will join hands to save this most majestic animal, which is our national animal, our national pride. When I look at the tiger, I feel it's my country's flag. I feel it's my responsibility, it's my fundamental duty to everything I can to save this majestic animal from extinction. So, I'm leaving you with this thought. Tigers definitely need you. But for your survival, you need them too. You also need them to flourish. Because if the roar in the forest, which you just heard at the beginning, if that gets silenced, life is bound to get silenced here also, my friends. So let's join hands and save this miraculous, majestic and most marvelous creation of God. Thank you.